the Indian neem tree. Neem trees thrive in poor, dry regions, building new soil where overgrazing and deforestation have ruined the land. The tree is now widely planted in damaged areas. The Ayurveda, India's ancient folk medicine, prescribes neem for a range of disorders, such as skin infections, parasites, and fevers. Twigs are sold for chew sticks, natural toothbrushes used throughout Southeast Asia. There are many kinds, but neem is the best for dental health. This toothpaste factory near Stuttgart is one of three in the area using neem as an ingredient. Production is high and it's invaluable to farmers. As a fertilizer, it's more powerful than farmyard manure and it keeps insect predators at bay. Added to cattle feed, neem cake provides extra nutrition in famine times and helps to treat intestinal parasites. In the household and the granary, neem has long been used as an insect repellent. Leaves spread between clothes and blankets keep moths away. Leaves or oil mixed with grain keep it insect free during months of storage. The unique power of the neem tree immediately protecting the cabbage from the attacks of its insect predators. They may be present and they may be hungry, but they don't eat. That's neem's anti-feedant effect. Is there any possibility that it's toxic to human beings? The beauty of this is its remarkable specificity for insects. It has no toxicological significance for humans or most forms of, uh, of wildlife, birds, fish. How broad a spectrum of insects does it act on? Actually, it's very good in that regard. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has tested over 200 species of pest insects, over 90% of which respond in one manner or another. That's remarkable. The neem is effective against fungal infections, parasites and bacteria, and in the battle against malaria in preventing Chagas disease. Neem saves lives. We created practically a sensation because we are looking on neem derivatives and substitutes for the synthetic pesticides. Synthetic pesticides are weapons of mass destruction, killing all the insects around, whether harmful or not, and threatening other forms of life, including us. Residues contaminate soil and waterways, and they're on our food. The neem that we've tested has been every bit as good as even the, the best conventional insecticides. It's quite crazy to go around destroying our forests in the sort of way that we do. Scientists are using the vast range of modern analytic technology to take the neem tree apart. Individual compounds can be synthesized and mass produced for the global pesticide market. People who live with the neem tree could profit from an international market that cut them out, particularly the pesticide industry. The farmer can easily make extracts and apply it to the field without uh, having to worry about identifying the active ingredient. Products used for millennia by third world countries end up profiting first world corporations. They own the plantations, control the distribution, or these days may even have a patent on the active molecule. GATT was drawing in intellectual property rights and patents into a world trading system. And that's when I decided this is what I must work on because it was really about the most fundamental fabric of our moral existence. Over the past decade, we have been gaining ground. And when I say we, I mean ordinary people committed to the welfare of all of humanity, all people irrespective of gender and class and race and religion, all species on the planet. We managed to take the biggest government and one of the largest chemical companies to court on the case of Neem and win a case against them. W.R. Grace and the U.S. government's patent on Neem was revoked by a case we brought along with the Greens of European Parliament and the International Organic Agriculture Movement. We won because we worked together. <laughs>